Hey again guys, and welcome back. I finally have gathered enough stuff for a mailbag video, so let's just get started. First one up is this big one here, came via ePacket. And uh, yeah, you can hear there's a bunch of stuff rattling around in there. Um, May 19th was ordered, it arrived July 17th, it was 1825. It's a little expensive, but here it is. So these guys are uh, project enclosures. And I thought I had only ordered two. Hmm. So they're a bit bigger than I expected. But they're not all that big. Let's see. Um, for you Americans, they're about... Uh, two, what is this? Uh, three and a half inches wide. And for us, uh, the rest of the world, here, I'll just use a ruler. So four and a half by three and a half for you Americans. And for the rest of us, it is nine by, yeah. 11 and three quarters centimeters. So pretty decent size. Oh, and they're, they're kind of deep. They are uh, five and a half centimeters deep or two and a quarter ish inches deep. And I bought these things because there are some projects that I want to do that go outdoors. And these projects may include cameras or sensors. So I wanted something with a sort of a glass or a transparent front. So this is uh, plastic. So it shouldn't um, actually block infrared in case that's what I want to do. Uh, and it shouldn't block sort of, um, you know, the Doppler type sensors it shouldn't block that as well. But it should be waterproof with this little gasket and they ship with the two other screws in there. So you basically just thread the gasket into here, uh, kind of loosely because or else it's not gonna be long enough. Sort of like that. Then that gasket should fit tightly onto this lip here and it should be fully waterproof. Now I'm gonna have to do some testing to make sure it's fully waterproof and I plan on doing that like so. Oh, there we go. Look at that. You can actually, it's actually longer than it needs to be. So you have to cut it and uh, lay it down in there. And then that should secure nicely. Let's see if I can give it a chop here. There we go. There is a small gap in there. Try to shove the gasket forward and take the screws out. And then line this up. Yeah, I'm not sure. Oh, there we go. Yeah, okay. So it's crushing the gasket all the way around. And yeah, these should be fairly waterproof. I'll have to check the listing though, because I swear I only bought two. So either the listing was for a pair of boxes and I'm missing one, or the listing was for individual boxes and I have one extra. But yeah, these things are kind of expensive, but when you're looking for something waterproof with a clear front, that's kind of the only option. I guess you could like DIY a box, but yeah. You know, I'm not even sure if my 3D prints would be waterproof. So this is this is a good alternative. And um, yeah, projects to come will go in there. Um, they're a little bit big, so I might order a few more, a little bit smaller ones. And it looks like all the hardware is included, which is great. So yeah, they're just boxes with clear fronts. Let's go on to the next one. And I just double checked before the next item, and I did buy three of these. So everything's good. Next one up we've got this one. 
uh, March 5th to July 30th, uh, dollar twenty-eight. It says 100 pieces, pitch jumper, shorted, cap, and hey, yeah, H E A. Uh, yeah, dollar twenty-eight. So, couldn't be something very big. Oh. oh, let's take a closer look at these things. So this is actually a two for one. Uh, so what was written on it was these things. These are the little um, jumpers that short two pin headers together. And I bought a hundred of those. And I'm not sure why I bought these because um, I remember shopping for the ones with the, the handles that I got in a previous uh, mailbag episode. So I think I might have just forgotten to take these out of the cart before I ordered the entire cart. So these things, not that interesting. But these things, they are a lot more. So what these are, there should be 20 of them, but they're surface mount micro USB uh, connectors. So these were each $1.28. And I just feel like with my uh, partnership with PCBWay, I'd love to make uh, boards that use these connectors integrated, but I couldn't make sure that the footprints would be fine if I didn't have the uh, connectors on hand. Now that I have them on hand, I can easily make boards with these things included. So if you want to see some surface mount soldering, which will no doubt be difficult because if you look, the pins just barely stick out of the end there. Um, Stick around and make sure you're subscribed. Let me get you a closer look at one of these things to show you what I mean. I hope this is adequate to show you the scale of the problem. Uh, these pins are absolutely tiny. And if I short them out, uh, this thing won't work. So I'm pretty excited to try this, but uh, maybe a little scared. Next one up is this one that says original IC driver and this was ordered on June 9th. It showed up on July 20th, $3.41. And okay, let's take a closer look at this. So these things come from, uh, I believe, Scott Beasley. And I think he is working on um, projects that have a, um, um, a basically a jewel thief as a power supply for microcontrollers. And he uses these, um, these are the like, XQ, uh, QX5252F chips. And these things can be found in all those uh, solar lights and they drive a little inductor and they create a higher voltage than your single 1.5 volt battery can create. So that's an interesting concept. I'm gonna to link to his video uh, down below so you can go check that out. I would love to give these a spin. They're a little bit expensive, right? At three bucks, I think I got 20. Um, but uh, unfortunately, I don't have the inductors that go with this. so. I mean, look forward to the future where I'm going to be trying different things, trying different inductors and creating little uh, power supplies. But yeah, these things are like an all-in-one solution to boost some voltage uh, if you need low current. So that's going to be really interesting all by itself. Next one up is this one here. And there's no price and there is no timeline because this comes from one of you guys. It was sent uh, directly from China to my P.O. box. It says light bulb times one, but it feels like there's something times three in here. So let's see what's going on in here. Okay. Well, there's light bulbs. Oh. That doesn't sound good. 
so okay so there looks like it's just a one of these uh, chandelier type light bulbs and the circuit board is just loose in there uh, in fact I don't know if you can see that but there's a wire sticking there where it was crimped over not too confident on these things like I can see there's a bridge rectifier there um, and there's enough wires here that it could be there could be a capacitor involved mm, interesting they're just cheapy Chinese bulbs I don't have um, I don't have a socket for these yeah they're just they're just Chinesey bulbs I don't have a socket for these I could try to light them using just exposed copper I guess I guess I'm gonna give that a shot I mean if I zap myself it might just makes for a good video okay well um, if this wasn't going to be clear enough by the setup uh, don't try this at home I have the uh, live taped to the threads here it could be making a shit connection but we'll deal with that when we get to it but I've covered all the threads up so there shouldn't be any problems uh, I have the neutral uh, coming here and I'll just touch it kind of like this and we'll see if it lights I also have it running through my GFCI uh, tester here and I have a foot pedal so if I get zapped for whatever reason I could just let go of the foot pedal so uh, here goes nothing there we go should be active okay so we got a cool white cool white light coming out there it's not super bright and it's not super even either oh boy yeah it's uh it's pretty unremarkable now these connections here will be live as well so we got to be careful about that I'm just gonna touch this onto this and then hit the pedal there we go so there it is all lit up it's getting relatively hot but not too bad so yeah I mean it's just just a chinesium light bulb um, we can try to do some fun stuff like replace the LEDs and stuff um, in a different video or maybe even uh, check what the voltage they operate at and the current they operate at but that seems like you know that's a teardown video and this is a mailbag video so I think we should move on to our next item and the last item today is this one here which I have already opened because well, I wasn't really expecting anything from Amazon. I was like, what the heck is this? So this here actually comes from Adept themselves. Um, it seems like uh, they're really interested in kind of like the sort of video, the, the live stream I did with the, with the uh, tank robot. And they want me to take a look at this. You see it's unopened. And I'm actually going to do a different style of video with this. I'm going to try to make a highly edited down build and maybe a separate review video. I'm not sure. But either way, there's going to be a build and review video. They could be two separate or they could be one. But uh, yeah, if you go on Adeep's website, their stuff is actually really cool. Like they make these nice kits. Oh wow, that's a, uh, yeah, like this. Um, another maker had some of their stuff. Uh, and in fact, he sent me actually the control board for this thing. Yeah, it comes with all the servos, comes with everything you need. So a whole bunch of servos. They've got a lot of this uh, laser cut acrylic stuff. Uh, USB lead, yeah, pretty much everything you need aside from the um, 18650s. It's a nice hardware package. Looks like a couple of suction cups for the base. Holy crap, that is a huge bearing. This is a um, 
It's a thrust bearing, actually. That's incredible. They must have paid this. This is like an $8 part. Look at that. So that's the main bearing that allows it to rotate. I mean, I'm sure they could have used something much cheaper, but this is good quality. This thing can probably handle, you know, a couple thousand pounds easy. Um, nice little uh, wrench, a little screwdriver, some wire loom, which I never tend to use. And yeah, all the laser cut acrylic pieces, which this is kind of the reason why I want to do a more edited video is because it takes forever to rip this stuff off. So this is going to be an interesting build. And I want to bring you guys along for the ride. This is a little OLED unit. I guess this would be their control board. And I think this is exactly the one that another maker sent. So the great part about this kit is that I can build it as is and give you an actual review of the individual parts. But then we can have some fun modifying the kit, maybe modifying the controls, anything really. And this is my plan for this kit. So thank you Adeep for sending this to me. I can't wait to put it together and make a video. And so sadly, that's the end of today's mailbag video. Um, I want to thank all my viewers, but specifically my Patreon patrons. There's been a few extra of you this month, and it's it's really uh, endearing to see that people actually want to support me and what I do. I love it. You guys are the best. Um, also, there's affiliate links for all these items in the description below. Um, the Amazon.ca affiliate link will be mine for this one. Um, the .com will be another makers as we have an arrangement in place and for Everything else you guys let me know in the comments below. What is the first item you want me to do a deep dive on? Thanks for watching